Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all. I'm going to speak in this short video about the mitral paravalvular leak tips and tricks. This patient was referred for me for the assessment of his paravalvular leak. He was found to have a paravalvular leak in transthoracic echo. That's why he was referred for Peter TEE assessment with 2D plus 3D. In this basal level of imaging at the zero degrees, which is a flat line or horizontal plane of imaging, there was no clear gap seen uh, around the mitral valve. That's why you have to put the structure of interest, which is here the mitral valve, put it in the middle of the screen, and then you can sweep by the multiplanar angle from zero to 180 even to check for the whole uh, mitral valve. When I reach this angle about 139 degrees of imaging, which is around the long axis view, I found this more or less anterior gap. So there is a dehiscence here between the prosthetic mitral valve with the anterior mitral annulus. I'm saying more or less because I cannot see the aortic valve and the aortic root open fully. That's why you should know that in this view, you are not exactly perpendicular to the aortic root. That's why you cannot label this defect as exactly anterior or at 12 o'clock position clockwise orientation but here the aortic valve and the aortic root are not fully open that's why i'm saying it's a bit anterior or more or less anterior but not exactly at 12 o'clock position and that can help you if you are using 2d imaging only then you can use the color compare tool this is very helpful to make sure that this gap is a real gap which allows color to pass through during systole, it is not again drop out artifact. Exoplane is also very helpful. You cannot use exoplane except if you have a 3D probe. Exoplane can help you to detect the gap, to diagnose the leakage, and to localize the leakage as well. Sometimes it will help you to discover the mechanism of the dehiscence or uh, the gap. In this case, this patient had a vegetation which is here. I cut it here by the exoplane, that's why it appeared here on the other side. This patient had infective endocarditis on top of a mechanical prosthetic mitral valve, that's why he had a paravalvular leak. Color also is very helpful. If you notice here, I'm opening the aortic valve and the aortic root much better than the previous image, that's why I feel that I'm exactly at 12 o'clock position, but I cannot see the gap in that place. That's why I said in the previous image, that I was not exactly at 12 o'clock position because here's the 12 o'clock position I cannot see the gap but there is something else which is a color signal at the base of this cusp which cusp is that? the anterior cusp of the aortic valve all of us can swear that this is the right coronary cusp but the other one it is either the non-coronary cusp or the left coronary cusp that can be more clarified by the 3DT or the short axis view the other tip here is using the tool of the 3D Live mode of acquisition because many times I'm getting this question when to use the 3D Live? This is one of the answers. If you are interested in getting a small structure of interest, 3D Live mode of acquisition is quite enough because it is a narrow sector acquisition but it can give you a higher frame rate. Starting from this 2D view, I can see the gap very clearly. I'm sure by color that this is a real gap. It is not a drop out artifact then just press on the button of the 3d live mode of acquisition then it will give you the exact same image this this frame is the first frame here with some depth in the elevation plane so you make sure that this is a real gap it is not a drop out artifact then after that starting from this narrow sector acquisition this is the left atrial appendage by the way because this is the same frame with some depth in the elevation plane and the good thing about this mode of acquisition that you can control the width of the sector of imaging after you acquire it. So you already acquired it, press the button. It is not like the 3D zoom. You already press the button here, then you can play with the elevation plane width and the lateral plane width while being live 3D beats one acquisition with a good frame rate. So uh, enlarge the sector of acquisition at the elevation plane and then you can get a clearer view for the gap which is a real gap and not a drop out artifact 3d zoom mode is a very helpful tool because it gives you a wider sector but you cannot play with the width either in the elevation or 
in the letter plane after you press the button for the second time to acquire this volume. You can rotate everything, but you cannot change the sector width after you display it like that. So this is a uh, lift atrial perspective, view surgical view of the mitral valve from the lift atrial perspective. Aortic valve is more or less at 12 o'clock position. And this is the prosthesis. These are the discs. And this is the gap very clearly seen if this is at 12 o'clock position. So we can say that this is from 10 to 11 o'clock circumference, clockwise orientation, uh, putting the aortic valve at 12 o'clock position. Localizing the defect is very helpful in terms of assessment of the feasibility of the percutaneous repair. I'm not talking about this particular patient, but generally speaking, in order to uh, orient the interventionist or even the surgeon about the exact location of the defect that can very helpful in decision making whether this can be closed percutaneously through a transeptal approach or transepical approach because all of us know that the lateral defects are more feasible to be closed through, through transeptal approach because he will come by the catheter from the right side puncturing the septum and it will be much easier for him to fill this gap laterally which is much easier than bending the catheter or the sheath after crossing the septum towards this medial part of uh, the mitral valve. This is the exact same patient, but looking from downwards, I'm now in the LV apex looking to the mitral valve. I got this by rotating the volume 180 degrees along the Y axis. So this is the mitral valve from downwards, and this is the gap here, and this is the LVOT. The gain, the gain problems. This is the exact same patient, but I lowered down the gain. That's why you can see a very large gap and you can misinterpret this as a complete dehiscence or almost complete dehiscence of the prosthesis, which is wrong. That's why I told you start first by the 2D image to make sure that this is a real defect or the, a real gap or a real leakage because the 2D has higher temporal and spatial resolution compared to the 3D echocardiography and all of us know that the Achilles heel of 3D echocardiography is the frame rate and temporal resolution. This is an example of the same patient with an average gain and this is the same patient with a very low gain that's why take care of that don't fall in this trap. Other examples of some other patients this is another patient with a slit like defect which is almost between 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock position putting the aortic valve at 12 o'clock position the same patient but looking from down the LV this is the slit like opening here this is another patient with a more or less posterior uh, gap at between 6 and 7 o'clock this is a lift atrial appendage mitral prosthesis aortic valve this is the right coronary cusp because it is the most anterior this is the one near the septum non coronary cusp and here is the left coronary cusp which is lateral or left near the left atrial appendage this is another example of how the gap can be hidden from one view and be clear from other views. So uh, this, this is the gap which is not so clear and if you are looking straight from the left atrial perspective, this is the left atrial appendage. But if you use the 3D live mode, you can see the narrow sector acquisition. It became more clear. It's a space between the annulus, the native annulus of the mitral valve and the prosthesis itself. It is the same idea about the difference between the BFO and ASD. ASD is a real defect, while the BFO is a potential space between the septum primum and septum secundum. This is uh, a kind of uh, PFO type uh, leakage because the prosthesis is really covering the uh, mitral valve annulus and you cannot see the gap itself, the 2D defect, if you are looking straight from the left atrium. You have to look from a side in order to appreciate this gap. This is another way to do it. Instead of looking from above, you look from the side, you can appreciate the gap here very clearly. Thank you so much. I hope that was helpful. I welcome all of your questions and comments either through my email or under the video, whether in the YouTube or LinkedIn or the Facebook. Thank you so much. And I invite all of you to join European Association of Cardiovascular Imaging Heart Imagers of tomorrow. Join us on the Facebook and uh, the LinkedIn group, Young Network of Cardiovascular Imaging. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.